Omningagwa third term bid an awful idea that must be stopped. Once upon a time in Africa, coups were the only sure method of changing governments. And then, multi-party states emerged with fixed presidential term limits. These were soon replaced through amending constitutions, by hook or crook, to facilitate constitutional elimination of term limits. Regrettably, it appears President Emerson Omengagwa might be jumping onto this rickety bandwagon. Having benefited from a coup to get into power, Youth Day celebrations in Masvingo recently sent out a clear message that some in the ruling party desire a Umningogwa third term. A youth-led campaign would provide plausible deniability, but not when ZANU-PF national leaders, including Vice President Kembo Mohodi, openly endorsed the self-serving third term bid. After 37 years in power as Prime Minister 1980-1987 and President 1987-2017, Robert Mugabe convinced himself, and some in his orbit, that he was indispensable. It is too early for Umningogwa to entertain ideas of his indispensability. But he has done well to make himself the one-eyed man in a room full of blind people. You pause a bit when asked, so who will lead ZANU-PF when Umningogwa steps down? As far as performance is concerned, there is little to commend Umningogwa for a third term. The economy is in the doldrums. Repression is at its most suffocating since independence. Infrastructural decay has been normalized. Corruption has become a national subculture. In harsh tones, some argue a third term is a must to entrench the Umningogwa family dynasty and progress the Karuna agenda. Fortunately, these are private, provincial and ethnic matters that don't involve the rest of us. Not to mention the dangerous precedent that this will set. If Umningogwa and his supporters were genuinely concerned about his legacy, then a peaceful and constitutional transfer of power would do the trick. He would set a new bar of being the first elected Zimbabwean president to willingly step down. Now, this is a precedent worth fighting for. Umningagwa's first five years as president have been underwhelming and failed to separate him from Mugabe's record. There is a strong argument to be made that he has turned out to be worse than Mugabe on so many accounts. This is hugely disappointing. Gravely concerning is Umningagwa's failure to learn from Mugabe that clinging to power is a sure recipe for a coup. If his track record won't commend him for a third term, then there isn't much that his age can do for him. What is an older Umningagwa going to do for Zimbabwe, which he was unable to do in Mugabe's cabinet and as president? He will be 85 by the end of his second term and 90 if he forces a third term. Mugabe was 93 when he was forced out of power, mentally and physically incapacitated. Generally speaking, there are those who argue that presidential term limits must be discarded as liberal democracy is seen as a Western concept, which runs afoul of Africa's culture. The African culture in question being that the continent is better served by a consensus presided over by a strong man. Of course, those who argue that democracy is a Western concept and a colonial hangover see no problem with the colonial borders imposed after the Berlin Conference. While our constitution clearly states that the president must uphold, defend, obey and respect the constitution, Uningogwa has presided over the most egregious desecration of our supreme law. Now that ZANU-PF has all but secured a two-thirds majority in the National Assembly, this could be a done deal unless Zimbabweans decide otherwise. In 1989, Mugabe and ZANU-PF were intent on imposing a one-man, one-party state dictatorship, but this was stopped in its tracks opposition from within ZANU-PF by public intellectuals and a small private media helped to stop this terrible project. The Umningagwa third term bid is a terrible idea and it must be stopped. It will take a broad progressive coalition that includes elements in ZANU-PF, the church and civil society to disabuse Umningagwa and his sycophants of this awful idea. It is bad for democracy, ZANU-PF and the nation. Please like, 
comment, share and follow this channel for more information or updates on news and entertainment.